Good evening. Hi, good evening. Welcome to the CEN show, a platform where the people's voice is valued and informative. This evening we're going to discuss the election results. We have a roundtable for you. On the panel, we have Brother OTD, we got Brother Dr. B, and Brother Raj. So I'm going to start off by asking Brother OTD, how you doing this evening? I'm doing great. How, you, how about yourself? Doing wonderful. Dr. B, how are you this evening? I'm still learning. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And Brother Raj, how are you doing? I'm blessed, brother. Blessed. Yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. So I'm just since I'm since I'm only gonna speak about what I think about the election results, and this is what I said before the results. I said Mr. Trump is overt and I said Mr. Biden is covert. So do do anyone want to chime in on that or do they have a question for me? No, okay. So well, let's, yeah. let's move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question. You know, go ahead, brother. Brother OTD, yeah. what's the question? Well, well, the question is, you know, I, I mean, you, you, we, you say it's over, right? But you said the brother's covert. I, 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 I elaborate on that a little bit. Just your your statement, well, you know. Well, we we live in a system where we have one race that dominates, and I agree with Neely Fuller. It's a worldwide system, and the United States is a system that that uh, is a strong force in the world. So if you have the current president, which is Donald Trump, he's outright, you know, I would say outright deviant, and he put it right in your face. He put his thoughts right in your face. And his thoughts are anti-people, if you ask me. That's just my opinion. And then you have Biden, who has a history of racist tactics and basically, you know, conversation, well, not conversation, just in his speech, you could pick up on race, racist tactics that were against people of color. So I don't know how people change. You know, I think change is slow, but I would say that he's a covert person that has the same agenda as Donald Trump, which is over, and that's just basically to uphold a power structure that already exists that doesn't benefit people. So hopefully that answers that, and we can move on. So, Brother OTD, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. What are your thoughts about the results of the election in the United States. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, hey, one guy won, the other guy is out the White House. You know, that's how they play it. You know, it's 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 an election. So my thoughts about the election, you know, I mean, I always have thoughts that, you know, I mean, I mean, I look at the impact that it's going to have on me, my family, my community, you know, where I live. You know, because I mean, and I understand, and I have a lot of agreement with what you're talking about on a on a systemic level. You know, in terms of, you know, the the racism and the, you know, the blatant uh, disregard and blatant racism tactics that uh, you know the, the the guys you know bring to the table. But you know, like I say, that's that's historical. You know, from day one, you know, it's been going on and. So here it is again. We're having a, you know, we, we're having a, a, uh, an election that uh, that chooses candidates to participate in the system that you're talking about. So it's more of the same old thing, you know. But and but the reality of it is, you know, I've always said, you know, there was a time where I didn't vote. You know, I mean, I grew up in, you know, around politics or political uh, action and things like that through, you know people I was around coming up, you know, and uh, so I kind of understand the process. So, I, you know, I was a participant in that for years. You know, I've been to Democratic conventions and things like that. And 
it was kind of exciting when when we were kid when I was a kid involved in that because you know I guess you know looking at it on the surface didn't really pay it no mind from a systemic covert and overt uh you know perspective you know but as I you know tr- grasp you know learned and you know got a greater understanding you know throughout you know my basic learning and, 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 and matriculating through life, you know, I you know, I draw some conclusions, you know, similar to what you're talking about. I mimic, you know, this you know, that same but in the in the meantime, uh personally, you know, looking at it like a, a game in a way. You know, you can look at it in different ways. Okay, the you know, although it is racist, uh systemic problems and Things that come out of that, and you know, the United States is a big, polit- you know, political business machine that's been dominating the world. You know, globalization, uh, conquering, and you know that type of thing. You know, uh, you know, a lot of things that I don't agree with, and you know, been a, you know, outspoken on a, on a certain topics in that regard. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm still living this life. You know, so if I, you know. You know, I, I participated in this particular election, um, I guess just because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more or less, um, you know, locally, there's competitions, there's elections, and, 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 <clears throat> and, you know, things are decided. Money is being divided up among certain people. So, of course, you would like to get your own personal uh, you know, the people that you believe in, the agendas that they have on a local level, you know, so I look at things from a local level and how it affects the community, you know, in that regard, you know, so I'm kind of, you know, involved in the community, starting to, you know, got some plans to get a little deeper involved, you know, with some things that I'm doing and, uh, you know, continue on what I've been doing. So, but as far as the presidential election, you know, I guess if you choose the lesser of the two evils, you know, that's just a matter of, uh, that's relative to your thinking, you know. I mean, you know, you got people on one hand thinking that, you know, Donald Trump, you know, hey, he's, you know, as as, as nutty as, I, you know, and I use that term not loosely, he's as nutty as he presented himself throughout his whole term that he was in there, uh, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, he had, it was more or less, he was his own worst enemy, you know, because the people in, in in society, the ones that, uh, you know, allow, you know, this game to be played. Or sometimes you, you really don't have no choice if you don't have the information to have control on what's going on anyway. So, uh, but in the meantime, uh, you know, again, you, you know, the, the rhetoric and the, and the overt, you know, type of uh, posture that he had, you know, if he just would have shut his mouth and kind of chilled out, probably would have walked in backwards, you know. I mean, that's just my opinion because of the fact that, um, you know, a lot of people are asleep in society anyway. So, But at the end of the day, um, looking at it like a sports, like a, like, like, like sports, you know, somebody won, you know, and, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, when, on a personal level, you know, if – some of the policies that they represent, you know, that, that can affect me directly. You know, I look at that, that, uh, they got all these different plans. Ice Cube has a plan, different ones, and all the plans are similar, you know, but if you read through some of that stuff and if it comes to fruition, hey, might have an effect on, you know, you personally, you know, your family or your community, you know, certain grant funding, you know, certain things like that, you know, but, but anyway, um, I just felt like, yeah, the dude was kind of toxic, not kind of, was toxic. So, I mean, on that level, forget the politics, just his posture. He had a toxic toxic disposition. Felt like it was time for that dude to go, you know, just just because. I mean, the game wasn't fun to watch anymore, you know. So, but uh, in the meantime, you know, but that's it. I'm a, Like I say, I'm still learning too. So, that's my that's my situation right now. Okay. Uh... Any of you brothers have a, a comment about what Brother OTD said, or do you have a question for him? Yeah, uh, it's a lot of platforms out there with an agenda going on as far as putting forth a plan for black people. I mean, and, you know, it's a shame. Okay, that we have to... is this Brother Rods? Hold on, Brother Rods. I can't hear you clearly. 
Can you repeat Can you what you now? said? Can you hear me now? Is that a little better? Yeah, kind of make it clear so we can hear what you got to say. So you you got a comment? You got a comment on what brother brother uh, OTD said? Yeah. It's okay, go ahead. Putting together a plan, a black agenda for us. You know that you know a black agenda can be put together. You know in a matter of days. You know, and now that Trump is in the White House and and we do and we are old reparations that we we need to start putting together something and, and putting it towards Kamala Harris and, and, and Joe Biden, you know, in, in, in maybe two years or a year and a half, you know, once we get all our business stuff in order, you know, as far as us having the right attorneys and getting all the, the you know, the legal work right, because it ain't going to satisfy everybody, everybody black, you know, we ain't never going to be able to satisfy everybody, but at least let's get what, something that's old to us. You know, but yeah, it's just a little bit I'm elaborating on. Okay. So uh Doctor B, so what are your thoughts yes, about sir. the election? What are your thoughts about the election? Well, my first thought is that it's not over. Okay. And not because of any legal challenges, but because the media does not determine the uh who will be the the winner. That's determined by the state. And so you had the folks come on T V today and say, Oh, we project we project Joe Biden as the uh, that will be the the president. But if but if you if you really even pay attention, that's happened many times in uh in history as early as uh Last election, they was already printing magazines that said Madam President for Hillary. Uh, okay. In 2020, they they projected Al Gore won, and he had 271 electoral votes, and and he certainly didn't didn't end up um, winning. So, so well, I you don't saying, question. Quick question for you. This is a premature. Uh, entity? You mean to say that it, it's not so yet? It's, it's not. They, okay. The, the, the results have to be certified. There's there's four or five states that that don't have all the votes counted, and there's there's already challenges. So to say someone is the president elect is 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 accurate at all? But I, I and, and it happened as far back in nineteen not forty five but about. I think 42 or 43 with Harry Truman. They projected Dewey over Truman, and you know President Truman was holding up a newspaper saying Dewey defeats Truman. So the media has has taken on that role, but that's not the thing. But but I say that to say a narrative is painted for us by by people beyond politics, by by our media. And so okay. you got a you got a narrative of uh covert racism or overt racism and what does that even mean for instance people say Donald Trump's a racist well I don't I they say he has a repudiated white supremacy I I saw a YouTube video where for like 20 30 times they had different statements where he he said I disavow white supremacy he did it in both. He did it in the first um, uh, candidate debate. So that's a narrative that's been been created that he's crass, that he says hurtful things, whatever, whatever. And most people who would who would say that have never even watched one of his speeches. Meanwhile, hmm. you know, you got a narrative about about Joe, where people where people will um, or what the uh, president like Biden, where, where people where people will not even acknowledge oh, yeah. that he said something direct. He said direct stuff, and people will just not even pay attention. Sorry, guys, the phone is ringing around here. Um, people, will, they will not even acknowledge that as reality. So, so it comes down to the fact 
that a lot of what is racist or whatever is is created for us, you know, by 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 people in our that outside of our sphere. You know, I mean, I've, I've often said we 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 did a lot with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all very important Ahmaud Arbery and you know Mike Brown and so forth, but. Most of the people who have said, who have spoken out on that 50, 11 times don't know the name of X amount of kids who got killed and will get mad at you if you say, well, what about them? They'll say, well, we're not, we're focused on, we're focused on this killing, but we got to look at the, we got to look at the whole picture. So I, I say that the, that the projection of, of what's racist and who's in charge and how how they benefit people is something that we have to look at very carefully because a lot of it is fed to us, you know, based on emotion and other things. And we ignore the actual, the, the actual reality out of convenience. So that, that's my statement. Okay. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Okay. So, well, see, now we could go in some other direction. Do racism actually exist? If you have, are you asking me? Yes, sir. Or any of us? No, you. Oh, no, absolutely, okay. absolutely. But it's not. It's not. A, it's not. Forgive the, forgive the pun, but it's not as easy as black and white. I mean, there are well, there's econo- there's an economic factors. There's, you know, if you took people of color out of the equation altogether, you'd find people oppressing other other people, whether it be over resources, whether it be over um, labor. You know, with what, no matter what it's about, you're going to find people oppressing each other. So you can get rid of race altogether, and there will be oppression. Now. Racism is easier with people who look different because you can it's it's easy to delineate somebody as the yeah. other. You know, so I can say that's the other. But so racism, you know, we got we got four hundred years of of uh different different types of slavery in the United States and it's still going on. I mean yes. In, 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 I don't, I don't think it's ever stopped. The enslavement, you know, when, but I say we ignore the, the slavery and oppression that maybe doesn't affect us. For instance, the biggest oppression on, on the planet is, is, uh, um, is, uh, human slavery in terms of sexual exploitation and, and labor exploitation. And it's, it's happening right now. I mean, constantly. But but the things that don't affect us, we really don't even care about. Right. Okay. Well, uh, brother OTD and brother Rod, do you have a comment about what Doctor B is talking about, or do you have a question for him? Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> a lot of different levels of racism laid out in front of us so if it's not really affecting us we're not really paying attention to it so it's so much it's so deep that we need to go into these books you know these and do these books over you know these these rules they got set up that are just foolish it's 1800 you know that still laws on the book that you know that govern us you know and that's the only way we're going to really be free because that's so that's going to make everything equal, you know. A lot of us don't know all the, you know, just like playing a game and not knowing all the rules, you know what I mean? Okay. So, Brother OTD, question, comment for Dr. B? Oh, no. I'm, uh, actually, I mean, very well said, you know. Sounds like, you know, uh, you know, uh, a scholar in, 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 in what he's talking about, you know, makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, and, and I'm in I'm in agreement with that, you know, in those statements, you know, 
you know, like you say, what's projected and and what's real and what's not, you know, uh, in terms of, <clears throat> you know, and <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, your understanding, you know, I believe your understanding is 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 relative to to what you know, what you've learned, you know, and obviously, you know, uh, what it sounds like, it, it, you know, there's people learning, you know, that that understands. Because you're right, it's, it, everything is not based on race. You know, you can't blanket and say everything is, you know, they call it the race card, you know. I mean, you play the race card, you know, there is racism, you know, I agree with that. There's There's some deep-rooted systemic racism uh you know i've experienced racism but um throughout my daily life you know um is how i carry myself and how and, and how i deal with uh people because we're talking about human beings you know we're talking about people interacting with people you know every day so people make decisions you know they can make <clears throat> they can be in charge of making decisions so you know that have an effect on your outcome in life you know so if you fail, you know, so it's, it could be personal. So like I say, that's what I mean by relative, you know, it's just uh, going through life. You know, I can I can experience racism being, uh, you know, uh, you asked the question about is race, does racism exist, you know, and he pretty much, you know, gave, gave his, you know, summed it up. And so what I'm saying is I can, I can actually witness uh, things that are going on. There's certain variables. You know certain components there that that make up what my interpretation would be. Oh, that's a racist act, or that's. But everything doesn't have to be, uh, you know, based on your race. You know, based on your color. You know, they might just don't like you for other reasons. They might not. You know, it, you know, it could be other things. But so, but I have, you know, actually, you know, like I say, my summation. I say, wow, that's racist. You know, and and yeah. and because. What? Oh, I think that was Brother Ross probably talking to one of his children. So, I let, before I get to Brother Ross, let me just let me add this. Now, they there was, and, and I'm not the expert in the political field, and I know that that Doctor B has uh, some experience because of his his occupation with with interpreting uh you know politics and also i know that brother otd was involved in politics through his upbringing because his parent was a politician in in a sense so now i want to say this and you guys can chime in brother rise we're going to get with you on your opinion about the election results, which we were just informed that it may be premature. So we, have, we, you know, we can, we got to take that in consideration because we do have media outlets that gives projections and, and everybody jump on the bandwagon and, you know, the media is there to, to sway our thinking. But let me just say this. I know like with the, with the 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 well, I'm trying to get this straight with the appointment of Amy Coleman Coleman what's the lady's name you guys help me out Barrett, Barrett. Amy Coleman Barrett you know there was people in the media and you know here we go with the media again saying that she you know the process that they used to get her in that appointment well, you know, the the Democrats disagreed with the way that happened. And they said it wasn't, you know, correct. So I'm, what I'm bringing to the table is if you are in a position of power in which we have people that's in the back room in power, does that have an effect on the process of of appointing people correctly is is will power can you can the power structure actually make moves without it being correct and things happen like that appointment so can you guys touch on that for me please so you know we we we're still learning well let me let me 
start off by saying most people don't realize how much power they have. And it's almost like playing Monopoly. If you know how to play the game and you end up with all the properties and people be mad and tossing the game board, don't be mad because I know the rules and I know how to stay alive in the game of Monopoly. You know, that's the only time people start tossing the game board is when they're mad because they're like, you cheating. No. Um, I know I knew the rule that you didn't. You mad. So with the Comey Barrett thing, if the if the Democrats could have done it, they would have done it too. And they got up there and postured, but they were trying to push through Merrick Garland um, during their time, and and the, Repo- the Republicans blocked it. I mean, when, whenever you have that dual system, you're going to have that game plan. And sometimes people play the game strong, and sometimes people, their strategy works out, and they're in the right position to do the things that they want to do. You know, so it's it's – there, there is no really cheating because the Constitution is the Constitution. The laws are the laws. It's just the wrangling and kind of hustling and, and you know, kind of working it behind the scenes that that gets that done. You know, so um, people have been decrying the court is too, is too conservative. Well, it's been, it's been mostly liberal. People are literally saying that's Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat. No, it's not. It's one of nine seats on the court. And whoever's, whoever's president at the time, it fills it. And people have been playing that game for, for many, many years. And so, you know, I'd say, you know, and they, they're mad. They, I mean, they, they ripped this, this lady up because she has values. But, I mean, you know, what are her values? You know, she, so, she's about quick to Quick question, Dr. B, yeah. quick question. So you said the, you're saying that the appointment was legitimate and there wasn't anything underhanded about it. That's what you're saying. 1,000%. Mm. 1,000%. Okay. They, now, they, now they, they cast the narrative that they were, that you're going to try and push someone through and the American people didn't get to make, make their choice and all that, and it's an election year. And the whole point is, that the president's term goes from this from January twentieth to January nineteenth, four years later. Then there's the transfer of power. So in, until the next president is sworn in, that person has the right to do to do what they want. I mean, like if, on the last few days of a presidency, they be doing all kind of um, pardons and clemency for for friends and others. Sometimes three, four hundred people, and they'll do it on the last day because then, you know, nobody can say, "Oh, you." There's not really anything to, or nobody can really block it. But no, okay. her. Okay, another matter. quick question, because mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to lose sight of these questions. That's why I want to get them in there real quick. Okay. So when President Obama, when he was trying uh, attempting to appoint people, he was unsuccessful. So you saying that? That wasn't a power move, or it, or course, am I correct in what I'm saying? It was a power move, but but you got to remember with the with the three branches of government, it those who are in charge of the Senate control a lot. You know, there's this famous scene in this movie about 9/11, where all these uh, um, black congresspersons were trying to get aid for their areas and whatever. Or trying to trying to do something, and they couldn't get one one senator to sign off on it. Nobody. Mm. And and it was a stark reminder. And well, the the way the the way the filmmaker put it is that he was being racist to to the people. But but the point was that the Senate controls the House. That the lower the lower body is just the representative body, and they can do certain things. But but the Senate, they have to have the permission of the Senate to do it. And if not one of those senators is with it, that's what it is. So when Obama came up, he didn't he didn't have, you know, to get someone through. He just didn't have he didn't have the Senate. And so it was just it was like a losing proposition. But you know, that's 
I mean, that's why when they say voting, every race counts because they all build on top of each other, local races, um, state races, um, and, and national. I'll put it to you this way. Everybody was charged up for this presidential election because there was a lot of hype, but most of them people will, wouldn't, wouldn't pay any attention to the next set of local elections and reading the bonds and doing all that stuff. See, they got everybody hyped up for this with a lot of rhetoric, but people will go right back to sleep after this. You know, you go to any city city council meeting or school board meeting, half the time there's the, the same few people there because people don't want to be bothered until it's until there's a bunch of hype. So, you know, the politic game is, is run by very few people because most people don't care enough until someone hits them with rhetoric. Okay. Well, look. Let me let me get Brother Rod well, in here, so he can, uh, and we can come back to some of your points. Because I have a question, another question for you, uh, Doctor B. So, Brother Raj, what is your comment about the election? Well, I, I to me, it don't matter who won. It's a matter of what we're gonna do from this point on to make everything be the way we need it to be. Because to me, they're going to, like Dr. B said, they're going to, they're going to appoint who they want to appoint, no matter if it's Democratic or Republican, and they're going to do what they going to do, and they're going to hide these laws. And, you know, we got kids that we need to start informing about what's going on so, because, you know, everybody's not, you know, we don't live forever. So we, we got to start passing on some of this knowledge to these youngsters to move forward the agenda for the future, you know, because at the end of the day, reparations are due, a lot of things are due, and it's like you said, it's racism in, 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 all, in, in all classes, you know, different shapes and different forms. So to me, the, it didn't matter who came back in there. It's a matter of are we going to put our foot down now and, as a people would come forward with a real agenda for the for the next four years after this, it's it probably gonna take us at least a few years to get to put in writing what we really need and, and, and enforce it. So that's my that's my take on it. You know, I, I do agree with Trump, and it's and it's a narcissism, and you know he's a real narcissist, slick, separatist type of dude. But at the end of the day, he's showing his real colors, and and a lot of them white folks they hide it. You know, and, and he was the one that carried on that speed. He just tell, he was telling you exactly how he felt. And a lot of them feel the same way, but they, you know, they go along with it. Go so come to our church and get everybody to come vote, you know, for him. But then once once the election is over, with, everybody fall back to sleep, like Dr. B say, and nothing's being handled the way it needs to be handled. So we're going to step forward. We all need to come together and, you know, and put it together. So I'm listening to participation and and, uh, and education. You got to participate and you got to know what's going on. That's what I'm yeah. getting from all of this. Okay, uh, uh, Brother OTD and Dr. B, do you guys have a comment or a question for Brother Raj? No, I think, you know, I mean, Brother Raj made a good point. That's all. You know, I mean, it all, you know, you know, it starts, you know, at the grassroot level, you know, like Brother, like Dr. B said, you know, um, I've been to council meetings and school board meetings, and it's always the same people. He hit it right on the nose, you know. So I think what I'm getting out of it is until you get involved, you know, you know something that's within your grasp to have control over, at least have some input in. You know, we can't right. sit around and cry about the what's going on nationally, or you know, you can have your opinion. But I'm just saying, if you're not, you know, either you're real or you're not, either you're involved or you're not. You know, but uh, you know, so I, I, I think that point that Brother Raj made is uh, you know, is 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 is, is dead on it. You know, in terms of uh 
Trump and those types of things, you know, he represents certain interests. You know, he he's a so-called multi-millionaire, billionaire, whatever he is. You know, so they they represent their interests, you know, and and that type of thing. So you got to get in where you fit in, I guess. You know, so that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm gonna help anybody within my path. You know, from an educational standpoint, from a uh, economic standpoint, if I if I can, <laughs> you know. Uh, what have you, but, uh, but you know, it all starts at, at a grassroots level, and that's where the learning starts, you know, if you work in education, you know, K through 12 or even post-secondary, you know, that's still at the local level, you know, you're, you're, you're growing up as a child and, 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 and being taught and your family's passing on values, and then you, you move on, and you, then you, you, you it's like Brother Rod say, you know, you empower your children with knowledge, you know, train them up, you know, they're supposed to understand. And then, and then, you know, they become willing participants and uh, maybe show up at a school board meeting to affect change, you know, <laughs> meeting, maybe uh, have some ideas and, and uh, want to make some positive change. You know, uh, I think what I'm getting from Dr. B, you know, is like, you know, we could sit around and make excuses all day about a lot of different things, you know, and make lay blame, you know, and, and, and you know, of course, rhetoric that's being passed on by the media, you know, because if you look at the media outlets, you know, and I look at all of them, you know, the different ones, you know, not just the major ones I go off, you know, you know, and I go off to the Internet and look at different sources and, um, you know, and you see the slants and the different things and, they try to mold your mind. You know, you got to think for yourself. You know, of course you can, um, you know, weigh them, weigh them all out. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's based on empirical evidence. You know, uh, what what was was that? You know, that's the bottom line. You know, and then you move from there. But don't go for the okie doke. Yeah, Doctor Doctor B, I have a question yes, for you. Okay, okay. so. When you're when you're learning about the three branches of, I guess you would say legislation or 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 power, the three branches: mm -hmm. the leg legislative, legislative, the the judiciary, and the executive. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so you were saying earlier that that the Senate is more powerful than the 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 representatives the house oh, of yeah. representatives and i yeah, thought it was they, a balance of power well but that's they're they're all combined as as the congress you got the the house and the senate as two parts like in back in england early on they had the house of lords and the house of commons and basically they had the house of commons so the ordinary person felt like they had some had a voice and could get their grievances heard and all that. But the House of Lords was the ones who who kind of made the made the decisions. So and that I mean that goes far back. Like the, the ordinary people got so much juice, you know, in their sphere. And but but you always have kind of the the smaller group that that run that runs things. So uh, yeah, but the judicial is uh, its own power, and there's only nine of them versus 535 in the uh, in the uh, in the Congress, and then the president is one person in his cabinet. You know, so it 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 does work pretty good, and we change it up when we get tired. That's why that those midterm elections are so important because people can, you know. Let it be known that they ain't happy and change change the game, you know, and and shift the balance of power as it were. But but I I, I want to make sure I say you know with um, the brothers that spoke, um, you know, it it is a matter of thinking globally but acting locally, and you got you know you got to know your you got to know your your level and how much impact you can have on, you know, with what you want to see happen um, in the world. 
you know, and so you and you got to look at yourself and say, you know, what am I doing in my in my world to really impact somebody? How how much am I giving? How me? How much? It, it could be as much as a conversation with somebody that empowers them, and then they go out and you know do something great. One of our kids, uh, one of my kids recently, young people, um, she has a doctorate in, in nursing and is a professor at UCLA and yeah. came out the foster care system, you know, but, yeah. but she credited some of, some of the people that, that invested time. She, you know, she made a movie about her foster care experience and it was mm. just like some of those voices that she heard and, and then she did her own thing. So it's just, you know, kind of just being that, you know, sharing that energy the best way you can and allowing it to do what it does. You know, I'm, I think of, uh, you know, Mike, like Michael Jackson, world, worldwide superstar, but half the stuff <clears throat> that he did in the world, people didn't even know it was him. Yeah, and he just, yeah, yeah. that was his energy is just doing things for the people. And that, but, but that gave him a lot of power because he, he put that energy out there and got it back. And, and that's, that's why he was really, Epic, you got a whole bunch of people made a lot of money, but none of them have had that impact, you know, yeah. like 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 like, yeah. like that yeah. person. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to uh, kind of end this, but I wanted to let everyone, you know, if, if you want to add anything to the conversation, you can. We'll start off with Brother, brother uh, Raj. We'll go with you first. You, did you have anything else to provide for this uh, discussion? I just, think, I just think that we need to uh, have more dialogue like that and take our dialogue and our playbook out and start creating, you know, you know, have open forums, have open quorums so these young people get more involved and we start getting the Black Wall Street going, you know. We ain't got to – they ain't got to be big – it, it's probably bigger than the, the last Black Wall Street, but uh, it takes it takes the professors, it takes the people who have the knowledge to be able to be, be, uh, transpose it to the youngsters, and and these youngsters can be able to make it actually come to fruition, you know. And that's what I think, you know. That's the next step for us is come to fruition, you know. All the knowledge we got, all the power we got. It should be no. It should be. We should. We should be. We should be out of control, balling everybody right now. You know. So, and, and everybody should be living comfortable. You know. It should be no reason nobody should have to want for anything, knowing that we got all the power, and the power is with us. And now it's time to take all our knowledge and turn it into force. You know. That's it. That's my take on it. Okay. All right, brother. Uh, let's go with uh, Dr. B. Dr. B, any last words for us? Yeah, no, I would uh, just say I, I like what he just said about um, taking it, taking what we learn and know and understand and manifesting it, you know, because if you just, you know, if you don't, if you don't uh, spread love, you know, you we we can't we can't grow, and everybody needs to needs to to do everything in their power to you know have some good impact and and uh, do things and and not get caught up in the in what you can't do because there's always going to be limitations. But to uh, you know really really be about every every minute, you know I'm I'm a I'm gonna just be a a source of of light for whoever, and then the big things will come along. So, now I'm just glad to, <clears throat> you know, that we're here on a, um, on a Saturday night, and and uh, four educated brothers, you know, have given their time just to cipher and and talk. So I'm just happy that this this is becoming a thing that that we're we're, you know, the focus is on. Us, you know, us getting back to 
you know, getting grounded and and built and building up, building ourselves up. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that, man. Okay. Brother OTD. Well, I just want to thank everybody uh, for their input. You know, um, like I say, I'm I'm always going to be a student of the game. You know, I'm always still learning myself. And uh, I think brother brother Raj, you 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 cast some good points. You know, and I think that was important. You know that uh, I, I truly believe, like you know, the grassroots is where it's at. You know, of course, you know, it, you know, there's different levels, but it begins with you, and then you know your family, your community, and then with with dialogue like this, and scholars like you want to thank Dr. B for his input. You know, who sharing. You know, he doesn't have to come on tonight to do this, but took the time to. Um, you know, share information, you know, he's not selfish with his, with his knowledge, you know, and uh, we can all, we all learn from each other, uh, raise some points, you know, so appreciate that. And uh, brother Rasaki, you know, to, to be able to create this little platform, to create this platform, you know, for us to discuss, you know, you know, topics and, and issues and things like that. But dialogue is important. I think, and uh, you know, you, you you can't get any. You have to discuss it before you can, I guess, do it. You know, I mean, you can. I mean, you know, when you're trying to build coalitions and or get you know people involved in change, you know. So it's all important. So it's all good. Appreciate the conversation, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, well, let me let me end like this. We we started this platform because in my opinion the way that that people think is sort of primitive to me and we have to come with a new consciousness and the only way to do that is through work and effort and then people coming together to to help bring about a change of mentality and the theme of, of the CEN show is each one teach one. And that's what we're doing. If you kind of observe, whoever listens to this and observe, you know, what's going on, it's a, it's a lot that we can learn from each other because I've had history in high school. I've had, you know, I've, I have degrees and all of that. It, just because I have some formal education through through our our educational system that I was raised in don't mean that you know I have proper education that I actually need and can apply so you know I'm I'm learning every time I do this I'm learning and you know things that I've for, forgotten you know I'm getting that information again so I think this is a a real good thing to do and that's why I'm doing it and it's it's about us. It ain't even about me. It's about us. So each one teach one. That's the thing. So I appreciate you, brothers, and and hopefully we could keep doing this for a long time, you know, until we can't do it, and we can pass it on like Brother Rod emphasized. We need to pass it on to our kids, and definitely I'm going to do that. So I appreciate you, brothers, and I'm going to say good night for now and, you know, more to come. Yeah, thanks, bro, for putting it on. Appreciate it. Yeah, peace right. and prayers. And, and prayers. God bless, brothers. Stay strong. Peace. God bless. Peace, brothers. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take care. <laughs>